G'day YouTube, um, Oxygen Farmer here. Now, when I woke up this morning, I discovered that I'd missed a um, live chat by uh, a channel called Prepping Essentials, who uh, we've been sort of communicating with each other on and off, and he gave me a little bit of a shout out about quail, so I thought I'd better, for the benefit of a couple of his uh, followers, um, give you a quick rundown on qu quail. Um, my setup is less than optimum. I have got them in cages with um, uh, no permanent dirt bath for them and no permanent uh, undercover uh, little shelter that they could pick as a hidey hole so I'd like to improve that with my cages. They are a three tier cage um, in terms of a brooder cage they will hold a maximum of 14 or 15 per cage um, and I've got two sets of these um, so I've got six cages in all um, you can see them reflected in the door there behind me on just over here just there just reflected there okay now these birds that are in front of me, uh, they are the result of me buying two dozen uh, fertile eggs from a local quail person and uh, I hatched those. I got, I think I got 16 out of the hatch. One died in the brooder and then one died at about uh, must have been about week four. Um, anyway, I ended up with um, uh, what have we got here? One, two, three. Uh, well, I've got the seven girls and four boys, so that's uh, eleven birds here. Is my end result. Um, one of the males I culled and uh, uh, used for um, my first trial of my own grown um, game bird, uh, uh, cage raised game bird admittedly, um, which I did in a uh, sate um, slow cooker um, pot and it was a beautiful anyway my whole purpose for growing these is for their eggs which at the moment I am getting seven eggs a day which is 49 eggs um, a week which sounds like a lot but yesterday I was looking at a recipe for um, a uh, Ricotta and ravioli, uh, ricotta and quail egg ravioli. Um, but I didn't, wasn't interested in pasta. But I did have some puff pastry in my uh, freezer, so I made some little puff pastry parcels with uh, which I spread my um, chili con carne spice mix on, and then. Uh, put in some ricotta, made a little well in that, cracked a quail egg into it um, and for these 12 little snacks um, that was a dozen eggs gone so uh, they go fairly quickly in terms of that, there's not much to them um, um, so my end goal is to grow enough quail for meat and um, for me as a uh, single person living alone I'm thinking two quail a week for a year that's 104 that means I need to I need to do in terms of surviving uh, the survival rates of the birds that um, 
the hatch uh, I probably need to do uh, four lots in the incubator each year to get uh, the um, that would give me 120 and that would give me enough birds to look at replacing quail okay now let's get into talking about um, the life cycle for someone raising their own quail. So you get the eggs, um, you put them into the incubator, you keep the humidity at 65% and temperature at 37.5 for um, two weeks. Now in theory they hatch in 19 days so that means on day 14 or 15 you put them into lockdown. What that means is you take them out of whatever contraption you have for uh, that rotates or turns the eggs within the incubator and place them on a flat surface inside the incubator um, and then and you raise the humidity to uh, somewhere in range to keep the shell soft and the membrane soft to make it easier for them to hatch. Uh, the main cause of losses is the uh, tough, tough membrane that the chicks just get exhausted trying to uh, cut through it. So, day 14, you've taken them out of the turners, set them in the thing, to get the humidity up, this is the tip, you, to get the humidity up, you uh, put in a full glass of hot water. My hot water I take out of my coffee pod machine. I just, um, uh, it's uh, probably about 60 degrees. So uh, it's hot, hotter than the uh, incubator initially and that helps the humidity climb fairly quickly. Um, and then you just uh, do not open the incubator uh, for the next four or five days. On about day 17 or 18, what will happen is uh, they will start. You'll hear pipping from the um, from the uh, cage, and um, then. Uh, uh, <coughs> my um, pardon the rooster my um, uh, my incubator has got uh, uh, like a clear port at the top that you can look through and so I peer in through there and keep an eye on them until keep an eye on them until they um, are no longer wet bedraggled looking things and that they are walking around quite strongly um, and then 24 hours later you can transfer that first day of hatching into the brooder um, at that same time I put in a jam jar lid full of crumble which I have crushed just a little bit in my hands to make it uh, even a bit finer I put that in the um, incubator for them to uh, peck at if they are uh, looking for feed okay um, and <coughs> close up the incubator keep it locked down and for the next 24 hours check again remove any uh, fluffed up birds uh, but keep anything that looks slightly uh, wet and bedraggled in the uh, incubator and then <coughs> He's being a pain in the ass while I'm trying to do this. Uh, <laughs> and um, you, yes, until you think that no more are going to hatch. You're going to, you're going to have deaths in the incubator. You're going to have deaths in the brooder. Um, usually it's only one or two. Um, um, 
I did a very large batch last time and I had a large number that didn't make it through the incubation stage. Uh, so just prepare yourself for that. Anyway, in, onto the brooder. Quails, most birds... <coughs> most birds need uh, three weeks on heat uh, to, until their thermal regulation is sorted. For quail, they say four weeks. So they're just a little bit more sensitive to uh, getting cold in the first four weeks. So just be aware that you need to have them on heat a bit longer than um, po other poultry. Um, four weeks in the brooder and then um, I move mine into a grower cage at three weeks with a heat lamp above it. After a week I take the heat lamp out um, and uh, with this batch that I have here uh, at five weeks I had an egg in the cage. Um, and yes, usually that's somewhere between six to eight weeks. So it's a very quick turnaround. So um, I probably went through, what's that, for about six weeks. Six weeks of having, having uh, those uh, hens laying and uh, being there in the cages with the males. And then I started collecting the eggs and um, when you're collecting the eggs to set your own, um, you put them in a container, uh, pointy end down, and put them on a slight angle, and you change that position two or three times a day until uh, you're ready to load the incubator. Um, the other thing that you can do is uh, you can wipe over. Um, don't wash, don't immerse them in water because Eggshells are all porous and they're needed for the air. So, um, and that white bloom is uh, said to be uh, protective, antibacterial, um, but you can um, uh, wipe them down with the original Listerine, not any of those coloured or scented uh, versions, the original Listerine, and that works as a disinfectant on them. So, so uh, do that and then put them into your container uh, at room temperature, do not put in the fridge and just change their position every uh, six hours or so. Um, and then it's a matter of reloading the, uh, the incubator after uh, one week, however many eggs you collect for the week. I attempted to stretch that out by adding to the incubator for three days after um, I started it, um, and that was a mistake. It, uh, it uh, didn't help at all, and I just got more deaths uh, towards the end. Um, anyway, any questions? Uh, I, oh, what do I feed them? I use a, um, uh, a game bird starter crumble, um, which is fairly expensive. Uh, it's about $24 as compared to the free range uh, layer pellets that I feed my uh, laying hens, which is uh, $16 for the same weight. So it's half as dear again as their feed, but they're fairly efficient uh, converters of feed. Um, so um, they can stay on that um, until they start laying and then I move them over to um, the um, meat bird grower finisher um, mix which is slightly cheaper about $23 uh, a bag uh, of 18 kilos and um, at this stage, these birds are going through one of those every five, six, seven weeks. It's a bit hard to tell because uh, they lose quite a bit of it and plus I give a little bit of it to uh, the um, partridge and the um, uh, pheasants that I have got uh, growing here. 
anyway if you've got any questions just uh, just ask and uh, in the comments there and uh, if uh, you're interested in how I am uh, getting along with the quail getting along with my garden getting along with making the transition from this rental property to my um, retirement block uh, which is on top of the Great Dividing Range uh, here in New South Wales in Australia um, and uh, uh, yeah click the subscribe button and uh, uh, just follow this uh, journey along and I will try and pass on any tips and information and uh, warnings about disasters that I have done Anyway, stay safe. It's uh, fairly rugged. It's um, we're just coming up on um, five o'clock at night on the 31st of December 2020 here. So let's hope 2021 turns out to be a better year. Stay safe, everyone.